We're going to solve a problem that we've never seen before. And through the course of the solution, we'll learn a couple of really important principles and tricks we can use to solve these problems. Okay, we've got an ideal gas with initial pressure of 20 and initial volume of 1. Let's make a dot on the graph to represent the initial state. The pressure, that's the y value, is 20, so somewhere along here, and the volume is only at 1. Pretty small. So the data point showing the initial condition or state of the gas is that. It's expanded to a final volume of 3, so we increase the volume here to 3 on the x-axis, and a final pressure of just 5. There it is. That's the final state of gas. So what's happening? Well, you take the piston, here's the gas inside, locked in this chamber, you raise it up to 3 times the volume, and the pressure decreases as the gas expands, like this. And, you know, after some time, the distribution becomes even. Determine the heat energy transferred to or from the gas. Now, we actually can't solve this problem because the problem has to give us the graph. And here's what the graph looks like. I'll show you. So that line would be part of the given, uh, you know, part of the problem provided to you. But if it were a different graph like this, or maybe, you know, maybe the graph looked like this. We would get different answers. And we're going to see why in a bit. So here is our problem. We are looking for the heat energy transferred to or from the gas. That's Q. We can't use Q equals MC delta T because we don't know anything on the right side. Instead, we're going to use the first law of thermodynamics. When you add heat to the system, it could do two things. It could do work, and the system expands because of the heat that you added in. Right? Or it can increase the internal energy of the particles, which means they're going faster. Now, as a brief reminder, Internal energy is the total potential plus total kinetic energy. But because we are dealing with an ideal gas, there is no potential energy. And so we can use all these nice formulas we learned back in topic three. So if we can find work in delta U, we add them together to get the unknown. There are two ways to get work. The first equation says, take the fixed pressure and multiply by the change in volume. The second says, get the area under the PV graph. Which one of those approaches can we use here? Well, we can't use this because there is not a fixed pressure. The pressure is changing. It's dropping. So let's find the area under the graph. I'm going to break this area into a triangle stacked on top of a rectangle. If you do one half base times height, right, the base goes from 1 to 3, the height goes from 5 to 20. One half times 2, well that's 1, times 15, this is just 15 joules. And if you do one half, oh, sorry, if you just do base times height for this rectangle, because it's not a triangle, we don't need the one half, you have 2 times 5, that's 10. So the total work done is the complete area under this line, or between that line and the x-axis, which is 15 plus 10. The change in internal energy. To find this, we have to think back to our equations for an ideal gas. Well, we have the ideal gas law, right, or the equation of state. And the other equation we have with internal energy, U is equal to 3 halves nRT. This is another one in our data booklet. We studied this back in topic 3. So if nRT is equal to PV, we could write this as 3 halves PV. 
And if we want the change in internal energy, we just need three halves times the final values minus three halves times the initial P and V, right? Because every change, every delta is final. This is gonna be the final right here. Final minus initial. So what's the final pressure? What's the final volume? Well, the final pressure was five, the final volume was three. What's the initial pressure, right? Because this is, this is U final, and everything in that second box is U initial. So we do three times PV, three halves PV. The initial pressure was 20, and the initial volume was just one. So if you work this out, uh, what's this? Nine times five is 40, uh, 45, and then cut it in half, 22.5. 22.5 minus, uh, this is gonna be 30. So that's negative 7.5 joules. So there we are. If we plug in those values, substitute in the 25 and the negative 7.5, we get 17.5 joules. So that's the amount of heat energy that was transferred into the system when the graph looked like this. Now, if the graph looked like this, right? And it even, you know, almost touches the axis, let's say. Now, the area under the graph would be much, much less. So what would that change? The work would be less, but the delta U would be the same. The work cares about the particular path on the graph, but delta U only cares about where you start and where you end. So if this was much, much less, then that negative value here, the negative 7.5, could actually win out, and so heat would maybe have been transferred out of the system in the process. The important thing for us is this was a chance to practice two crucial equations. Work can be acquired using pressure, the fixed pressure times the change in volume, or it can be acquired from the area under the PV graph. Delta U can be acquired using, I'll write it in delta form, 3 halves NR times the change in temperature, or 3 halves times the change in the product of pressure times volume. So what does that mean? Well, this would be, you know, you have to do U final minus U initial, so that's U final is one half, final pressure times final volume minus three halves, initial pressure times initial volume. Or you could factor out, factor out the three halves like we showed above. The final product minus the initial product. These are some really important strategies for solving problems. We're gonna see them come up in a lot of different contexts, and we really have to have these kind of memorized and right there at our fingertips when we go to solve these problems.